Environment, the Honourable John Baird, the Secretary of State for Multiculturalism and the Canadian Identity, and Member of Parliament for Calgary Southeast, the Honourable Jason Kenney. The, the Mayor of the City of Toronto, His Worship, David Miller. Dr. Maria Amelia Paiva, Consul General of Portugal. Mr. Peter Ortved, Board Chair, Heritage Toronto. Mr. David Koshitsky, Chair, United Jewish Appeal Foundation of Greater Toronto. And Dr. Carl Ben, Chief Curator, City of Toronto Museums and Heritage Services. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's give everybody a warm Toronto welcome. everyone for being here today. Consul General Torontonians, I'm very pleased to be able to bring greetings on behalf of 2.6 million Torontonians to this uh, historic plaque commemoration service. And to explain uh, how I feel, I have to tell you a little bit about my day yesterday. Yesterday, I started the day at the Scarborough Chinese Baptist Church, where we sang Amazing Grace with a choir of 40 Chinese Canadians. An extraordinary experience. I was there because yesterday and today have been doors open in Toronto. And door, the theme of doors open this year is sacred places, sacred circles. And religious institutions from every single background were open to wars, uh, literally from A to Z. It was an extraordinary opportunity for the people of Toronto to experience our rich diversity and to see the traditions that each of us have come from. At the end of the day, in a rather different occasion, at a, a wake for a, a close friend of mine, Lynn Hurry, who was uh, very important to Mariposa, we sang Amazing Grace again at a bar on the Danforth. In between, I had had the opportunity to visit several different religious institutions and experience, for example, sacred music in the City Hall Rotunda from, uh, from the Southeast Asia. Ways, the extraordinary diversity that is Toronto today began right here in Kensington Market. Waves of newcomers from the British Isles, from the Jewish community, more recently from the Portuguese, Chinese, and many other communities have started their journey in Canada right here in Kensington Market. They've come as what we call today independent immigrants. They've come as what we call today family class immigrants, people seeking to join their family and join them in the great experience that is Canada. A welcome here, and all of them have made an incredible mark on the city of Toronto, on Canada, and on the incredible vibrant life in Kensington Market. So I was walking down from Bathurst Subway, we walked by Carla Sunday, and you could see everyone out in the streets of the market, you could hear the band and you could feel the vibrancy. It's extraordinary. So many communities have helped make this market what it is, and I do wish to acknowledge Toronto's Jewish community, which contributed so much to this area, and through the UJA Federation is still giving back to this city in enormous ways. I'm very proud of our city. We welcome everyone, and we live together with mutual respect, understanding, and in peace and harmony. That, to me, is what Kensington Market is all about, with a wonderful added layer of creativity and vibrancy. And it's in that spirit that we celebrate today the historic plaque. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge MP Olivia Chow, because I believe it was her motion in City of Toronto Council that started this process. And Olivia, thank you for your leadership and support of this community. Thanks very much and congratulations, everyone. To religious sentiment, to cultural events, to social support. Although the houses were crowded and commotion surrounded the streets, the market served as a warm, welcoming environment at a time when most of its residents were struggling to seek out a legal living and make a better life for their children in the new country. After the Second World War, many of the original Jewish residents began to relocate north along the Bathurst Corridor. While well, some post-war new immigrants, like my mother and her family, first lived near here, they too eventually moved out. 
Today, however, there is still some historical evidence of Kensington's Jewish era. Two of the early synagogues are still operating today. Anche Mid on St. Andrews and the Hebrew Synagogue, which is located right here on Bellevue. There are a couple of Jewish businesses around, and the Yiddish letters from Mandel Creamery at 29 Baldwin Street, now John's Italian Cafe. We met, and I gather we're, we're indebted to the federal government for arranging this beautiful weather for <laughs> On behalf of uh, Heritage Toronto, we're, we're delighted to be here to celebrate one of Toronto's most unique and cherished neighborhoods, Kensington Market. Heritage Toronto, like the historic sites and monuments for Canada, takes great pleasure in its efforts to recognize the people, places, and the events that have shaped our community. And we are particularly happy when something that we have long cherished within this city is recognized for its value to the country as a whole. And I gather the approval process for something like this to happen is, is counted in years, not in months. Air Toronto shares its essential goal with our federal colleagues to protect sites of historic significance, to celebrate and tell the stories of our city, the stories which have made us to a place that is continuing to evolve. This place, Kensington Market, uniquely represents Toronto's rich and very diverse cultural fabric. In many ways, Kensington Market represents what makes our city so distinctive and special, a character defined by successive immigrant groups and a tolerant and welcoming place to live and to work. We're happy to see this vibrant and historic community commemorated and today we thank the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada and its partners for recognizing this wonderful neighborhood on a national scale. Thank you very much. Just a city history <laughs> People have lived in Toronto, um, in the Toronto area, for almost 11,000 years. But urban Toronto, the place in which we lived, got its start in 1793 when British colonial officials built Fort York a few blocks south west of here and laid out the town of York near the other market in, in the city. Well, three years later, John and um, Sophia Denison came to the backwoods settlement. And then in 1815, their son, George Denison, bought the forest and farmland that is the core of today's Kensington, as this immigrant family, like many thousands since in this city, worked to improve its well-being in the new country. The same, as, and at the time um, that he bought this area, the town of York had a population of 720. The family also donated the old square in front of Bellevue to the city in 1897. And it, of course, is the park where we're gathered today and where generations of Torontonians have been able to enjoy themselves. At the time the city took over this park in the 1890s, Kensington still was mainly a residential neighborhood. Largely populated by people of British origin, it's not necessarily British birth, although of course the word British masks all sorts of national, regional, and religious diversity. However, things began to change, most notably with the arrival of a new Jewish population in Kensington. There have been vast numbers of Jews living in Toronto for decades who were mainly British and middle class. But Toronto's Jewish community grew rapidly through immigration as to the turn of the century, from 3,000 around 1900 to 32,000 by 1913. And most of the newcomers with their language and customs were different from the general population because they came from... Collègues parlementaires, en particulière Olivia Chow, et collègues provinciaux également, Marquesse and Souza. Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, it's a great pleasure to be here on this beautiful day, and I'm sure I'll, I'll pass on, uh, Mr. Orpet, uh, your commendation on the weather to my colleague John Baird, who'll be pleased to hear that he's getting some credit for good weather. He's in Japan today and was unable to be with us, but to ask me to pass on his best regards on this remarkable day. It's an honor to be here to welcome the Kensington Market to Canada's family of places, persons, and events of national historic significance. I'm delighted to be here to celebrate 
the Kensington Market area, a colorful and vibrant district that has become a home away from home for generations and generations of immigrants to this country. This historic district witnessed an important chapter in Canada's history, and from now on, a commemorative plaque issued by the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada will keep this history alive for generations to come. The tremendous value of the Kensington Market and the history of the Canadian urban immigrant experience in the 20th century. It is a day that should make us proud to be Canadian, each one of us, proud to live in a country where pluralism is part of our heritage as well as part of our future. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. The plaque honoring Kensington Market. And I would ask two people who have had a very great deal to do with making sure that this day came about. Dr. Carlos Teixeira, Associate Professor of Geography of the University of British Columbia, and Ms. Marcia Cuthbert, Chair of the Kensington Market National Historic Site Designation Working Group, Please do the honors for us. So, Carlos and Marcia, if you come forward. from the wedding in the synagogue just in the north over here at this point. And while the pictures are being taken, I'm sure, like uh, me, you forgot to bring your opera glasses this afternoon. And I'm going to ask, uh, therefore, uh, Mr. Tam Goosen, Research Associate of the Asian Institute and the Monk Center at the University of Toronto, and Dr. Ellen Scheinberg, Director of the Ontario Jewish Archives, UJA Federation of Toronto, to read the plaque text for us in our two official languages. So if you'd like to come up here to the mic. The history of the Canadian urban immigrant experience in the 20th century. Thank you very much.